Hey there, I'm Scott the Winemaking Guy and I'd like to welcome you to Help My Winemaking, the video podcast that helps people like you improve your winemaking savvy so you can make great tasting homemade wine. Welcome to episode 3. In today's show, we're going to cover a warning about building a wine cellar and three ways to truly enjoy your wine. So let's get to it. First, a warning about building a wine cellar. Well, last episode, if you were listening, you'll remember that we were talking about wine storage and I mentioned one of our problems about bottling our wine is we just don't have space for the wine bottles afterwards. So this week I had resolved to change that and so I was going to convert a, uh, a closet in our basement which is in the northwest corner, nice because it doesn't get as much sun as anywhere else in the house, uh, into a, a, a basically wine storage. So here's all the stuff that was in it. I pulled it all out and as you can see our cat George here was helping me by sitting on one of the shelves that we were going to pull out. Uh, I had a great time uh, building the shelves. Basically I just got some old uh, IKEA shelving and I just added uh, wood straps to it, cut them with the reciprocating saw and uh, just use a brad nailer uh, and space them evenly. And it could fit each shelf uh, fits about eight bottles and uh, there's 14 shelves so over 100 bottles that it would hold and fits nicely into the closet. Now, disaster. Uh, our <laughs> our closet had a musty smell so we brought in a, a bathroom guy because we were convinced that our shower which was right beside it was leaking and he took a look at the mold spot that we had in the wall, took a hammer to it and, and uh, lo and behold it's leaking. Uh, so we pulled it all apart and uh, saw some evidence of of where the water might be coming in and you can see the picture here that I took and then as luck would have it we had a big storm the same night and so I ran downstairs and, and watched water pouring in through this old rusted plug in the corner so we dried it all out and uh, now this weekend after I finish recording this podcast I get to dig all of this up and uh, get dig all the roots out because uh, previous owners had planted trees beside it and uh, patch it up with the compound so uh, it's going to be lots of fun <laughs> yeah right <laughs> and uh, I'm sure I'll update you down the road as how how it goes but I guess my warning to you is that if you do plan on converting an old closet in the basement and it's finished that you if there's a musty smell or even if there isn't that you uh, open up the walls and uh, have a look just to make sure that you don't have any trouble down the road because you don't want to have to rip it off uh, spend all the money putting it together and then having to rip it up later when there's problems. So uh, learn from my pain and suffering <laughs> before you uh, suffer the same consequences. Anyways, all right, let's spend the rest of the time talking about uh, three ways to truly enjoy your wine. Now this topic comes up because of two emails I received. One is from the pirate he sent me an email about magnets and said, hey, I try, did a taste test with these magnets and uh, I didn't really notice any taste. And then two days later, Keith Sanders uh, emailed me and said, hey, have you tried these magnets out to improve your wine? They are amazing. you got to try it. So I thought, hey, let's do a, a podcast on using magnets. And it seems like not a lot of people know about this. Uh, so this will be interesting. And then I took a step back and said, hey, let's talk about the bigger picture is how we could, what we can do to once you've got your wine and you're going to about to enjoy it because after all trying your wine and tasting your wine and drinking your wine is not just about the flavor but the experience that goes along with it so let's get to it so the goals here are one is when you want to enhance the flavor uh, enhance your wine you want to do three 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 things sorry one is open up the bouquet so the aroma two is enhance the flavors and three is smooth it out uh, if you've had a really nice wine, you'll, one thing you'll definitely notice is that it doesn't have a bite. It's nice and smooth. So the option one is typically what we do. My wife Michelle and I is use a wine decanter. We've broken more than our fair share, but uh, they work pretty well. Uh, basically, it's a crystal vase for your wine. You pour your wine in. It has a nice air space in it. And you want to plan ahead and give yourself an hour or two to let your wine breathe. And you can, these are freely available, come in all funky shapes and sizes, and are quite nice. Second option is uh, more on the short term if you need to do things f 
fairly quickly is to use here on the left you've got this little bubble that you attach to the neck of your wine. Now I actually got one of these for Christmas and they seem to work pretty well, although I broke it. <laughs> so don't have that anymore. Uh, I've also seen people use these stainless steel. Or they, I think they also come in glass uh, funnels where you can also stick a filter on top that'll uh, catch any uh, sediment that you have in the bottle. Uh, and then they just come out these holes here. You can also use this with a decanter as well. Uh, so that works pretty well. And I've also uh, was shown this Venturi uh, little bullet uh, instant wine aerator. You basically hold it over your wine glass, you put the uh, pour your wine in the top and then it sucks in air and it adds it to your wine and it comes out nice and flavorful. Haven't got one but I definitely will have to try it because it does look uh, interesting. Uh, another wine aerating system is using stemware and ice breathable glass has come up uh, with this crystal stemware that you pour your wine into and each glass relates to the type of wine you have and uh, within two to four minutes it aerates your wine. Whether that works or not I'm not quite sure and I also read somewhere that Rydell glasses are suing them <laughs> so we'll see how long they're around for. And of course the third option are wine magnets. And so here are three options. One is BevMaster on the left, in the middle is the wine clip, and third is the uh, Perfect Sommelier, which is basically a coaster that you stick your bottle on. So how do they work? And now my, Mark Fletcher, thank you for sending me this. Uh, the wine clip uses powerful magnets and helps break down large astringent tannins and helps accelerate aeration resulting in a softer, smoother, more balanced taste. It has an effect on the molecules of the wine, so the flavor is different. So, uh, and I do have a, a clip from, a, from a, a Dallas TV station that reviewed it, which I'll include a link to at the bottom uh, on the blog, if you're watching it on the blog. Uh, now, Patrick Farrell from BevWizard says, My initial theory was that the magnetic field and the oxygen were causing the tannins to enlarge and become softer. And you can see this diagram here at the top of the Bev Wizard, the, the tannins are hard and small and then pass the magnet and they come out uh, softer because they're larger. But as I've learned more about bitterness receptors, he says, I have come to believe that the effect may very well be a more subtle change that alters the aspect of the tannin molecule binding to bitterness receptors on the tongue. So he's basically saying that it's more how it, it just it changes how it tastes on your tongue. Uh, he also goes on to, he does a study that's quite interesting and he draws some conclusions. Here they are. One is the devices decrease the bitterness and astringency of both wood and grape tannins. Two, the devices decrease weedy and vegetal oats. Uh, three, it doesn't help well-balanced aged wines. In fact, he says it might even negatively impact them. Uh, four, should help reduce Oh, sorry, should help recently released reds and oaked wines. So he says it works better with uh, younger wines. And finally, he believes that the magnetic field and oxygen act synergistically together to affect these changes. Now, I, I purposely try to keep away from all the technical stuff because it can get rather technical. But if you're interested in learning more uh, about what Patrick Farrell uh, says with this study, uh, then go to winebusiness.com and search wine magnets fact or fiction. And uh, thank you, Wayne Romanowski, who passed that article on to me. It was very interesting. And it, in fact, also talks about the differences between the different magnets and some of the other options that I've talked about to uh, fully enhancing the flavor of your wine. So definitely worth reading. I'll also include links to everything on my blog for this uh, episode, so you'll have those, including a link to this wine. Um, article in Wine Business Magazine. Now, here's a, a thought that when I asked people about have they used magnets before, uh, that was cute and I wanted to include. Dr. Frank Puzio from Yarmouth, Yarmouth Port, Massachusetts says, if I put a magnet in my pocket and my wine is magnetized, would I be drawn to it even more than I am now? <laughs> so, there you go. I, I love that quote. I thought it was great. So, thanks, Dr. Frank. If you have any tips or comments to share, of course, please email them to me at tips at helpmywinemaking.com. And as you can see, I give everybody full credit for anything they send to me. Uh, and uh, it's been lots of fun so far. 
So that's all the time we have for this week. I uh, I hope you learned something new for sure. And thanks for taking the time to listen. To get more winemaking tips, of course, I invite you to find me on Twitter and Facebook, where my profile name is Winemaking Guy. Uh, uh, on Facebook, my page is fbook.me slash winemaking guy. And of course, my blog is thewinemakingguy.com. And if you haven't signed up for my free five part winemaking course already, I encourage you to do so and subscribe to podcasts on iTunes as well. Thanks for taking time. Talk to you later. Bye for now.